As this tournament draws to a close, the sun sets on a totally new Japan. A Japan not ruled by the fighters past two menace, that is, a cola. At least for like, maybe a week. Two weeks ago, we were treated to yet another Japanese super major, the alt rank S tier Mayasuma top number 11. And for the first time since his offline emergence about a year ago, Akola entered a Japanese super major and did not win. Before this, Mayasuma top 7, 9, and 10, Kagaribi 7 and 9, as well as Umibora SP9 were all won by him. And although he might very well just go back to winning events right after this, the fact that he was taken down by two players on whom he previously held a perfect record could just mean that Japanese tournaments are about to become a lot less predictable. Taking his place, of course, is the other prominent Sumimoto prodigy, Mia. After a relatively weak start to the year, finishing 13th at Umebora SP9 and 49th at Kagaribi 9, he proved all of his doubters wrong. After becoming the first Game & Watch to win a major back in July of 2022, he now also snagged the first ever Super Major win for his character. After some rocky pool sets, dropping two games before Top 96 even started, he really cleaned up his act from there. His run included dominant 3-0 wins over Pasiri Man, Gact, and Shutan, as well as a 3-1 victory over his biggest bracket demon, Akola, and two grueling set victories over the eventual runner-up, Ken. In second place, we have yet another character who's searching for their first Super Major win. Although he wasn't successful today, Ken continues his streak of very good results this year, after getting 9th at Umebora and 5th at Kageribi. Not only did he get his best result at a Japanese major ever, with his previous best being third at Umebora SP3, it was also his best super major result ever. Not only that, he also defeated two people who he has previously never beaten, Rizuyasu and Japan's number one, Akola. It's interesting to note that the character he opted for throughout most of the bracket run was his Sonic, while the Sephiroth saw minimal usage compared to most of his recent events. Although third at a Super Major can never be called a bad result, it must feel like one for Akola. Not only was he not able to get his three-peat of the Mayasuma Top Series, he also lost to two people who he was previously undefeated against, Ken and Mia. But this tournament was obviously not only negative for him. Not only did he cement his record versus Ashimo, proving that last time was a one-time thing, he also evened up a record that many thought he might not get a chance to fix. Mado, the ZSS who sent him to losers at Sumabato SP29. But this time, Akola was prepared and confidently 2 0 him. And although these two things have no correlation, it is quite funny that Akola's streak ends right when the band Steve discussion is at its all time peak. If Mia's start to the year can be called rocky, Ashimo's is that two times over. At his last seven super regional or bigger events before Kageribi, he missed top eight, with his last top eight before that being La Odyssey. But apparently, similar to Kageribi 7, Kageribi 9 provided him with the motivation that he needed. Although he lost his top 96 qualifier to Zelda player Wine, that was all part of his master plan to get a crazy loser's run going. This nine-set loser's run included wins on top Little Mac, Tarakatori, Rising Stars, Gorioka, Kaninabe, and Karage, as well as top 10 players T and Shuton. And although he ultimately fell to Akola, their set was so close that it definitely gives hope for their future encounters. For fifth place, there were... Two? All right, two Captain Falcons. The one you might not recognize is Karage, Having not left the Kansai region so far, he is most known for being one of the biggest Mayasuma hit grinders, being there almost every single week. Although his bracket was relatively easy, at least compared to his peers, he only fought one top 64 seed before top 8, you have to give credit where credit is due. He defeated Neo, who himself was on the run of his life, and brought Ken to the brink of defeat. But what's even crazier is that this one game was the only thing standing between him and the first Captain Falcon Super Major win. Because although Mr. Game & Watch is commonly considered one of his worst matchups, Mia is infamously bad at it, having a 0-2 record versus Jogaboo. And with his bracket very likely involving beating Mia twice, it does not seem all too crazy. And although Karage getting 5th is already crazy enough on its own, him winning the entire event would have been one of the biggest Cinderella runs in Smash Ultimate history. The other Captain Falcon is one you might be more familiar with, Jogaboo. 
He defeated Wine, Yoshidora, as well as Japan's best and second best Samus players, Yaura and Tora, respectively, all while only losing to second and third place finishers, Ken and Akola. Though one of these sets held, unbeknownst to the competitors, a little bit of special importance. Battle of BC 5's TO, Samuel, said this in Twitch chat, If Jogaboo wins this set, I will fly him out to Battle of BC 5. And with one of the most miraculous comebacks, managing a reverse three-stock against Yaura, he managed to secure himself a spot. After an unfortunate bracket at Umebora, Yaura secured himself another top eight finish. And although it wasn't as good as his performance at Mayasuma Top 10, it was nothing to scoff at. After Same as Ashimo, losing his Top 96 qualifier, Yaura went on a loser's run of his own, defeating Takara, Aim, Oi George, Gact, and Neo before losing to Jogaboo. Being as good as he is, it's a shame that he's still a relative unknown in North America. Hopefully, he'll be able to travel much more this year thanks to getting a new sponsor. Similar to Karage, the person rounding out this top eight, Kaninabe, is someone who almost religiously grinds the Mayasuma hit locals. This was his first ever major top eight, and he got Wine and Riziasu wins in the process. Funnily enough, his come up is happening while the other very good Japanese fox, Pasiri Man, is in a pretty big slump, falling victim to the odd year Pasiri Man curse. Just looking at this top eight, you might be unsure if this can really be classified as a super major. It definitely looks a lot less stacked than top eights from similar events like Kageribi and Umebora. But looking at some of the players in top 32 who didn't make top eight might alleviate those concerns. Shuton, T, Yoshidora, Hiro, Kome, Gact, Pasiriman, Shiryuki, and Atoria can all be found between 9th and 25th place, just to name a few. Now, for all these players to have landed outside of top 8, or even outside of top 16 for some of them, there must have been some crazy upsets, and rest assured, there were. But even then, it was relatively relaxed with regards to big upsets, as there were only 14 upsets of upset factor 5 or more. Apart from the ones we mentioned already, these were the biggest ones. Hiro lost to the Pichu player Yone Pai for the biggest upset factor of the tournament at upset factor 10. Umeki lost to Ridley player Korinku for an upset factor of 8, while Akakikusu lost his literal round 1 to Yukio. The last important upset is actually one that has already happened before. Japan's best snake, Dio, lost to an up-and-coming Rob main, Loki Tendon Man, and, according to this tweet, began the era of Loki Tendon Man. I, for one, welcome our new overlord. Obviously, there are runs outside of top 8 that need to be talked about as well. In top 48, there were four players with an SPR of five or higher. First of all, we have Yukio. Seated to go 0-2, he not only managed to snag a win on Akikikusu, but he also got 33rd, only losing to Atoria and Kome, netting him a plus seven SPR. The second best player is definitely the biggest surprise of the entire top 32, Daikon. Someone who before this was a legitimate 2 and -er, got 17th defeating Kairu, Japan's second best solo game & watch, Sasu Soro, as well as Tet for a 17th place finish, which resulted in him getting a plus 6 SPR with a combined upset factor of 11. True to its reputation, the land of Min Min's had yet another one take on the mantle as Proto Banham is still missing. Oi, George! Definitely delivered as he defeated both Atoria and fellow Min Min main Doramigi all while only getting Yaura and Shutan losses, netting him a 13th place finish with a plus 5 SPR. And last but definitely not least, we have Wine. Getting Zelda's best ever super major result, a 9th place finish, was already an achievement on its own, but that's not all. The wins he got on the way are very likely the most impressive collection of wins a Zelda main has ever gotten in a single bracket, defeating Ashimo, Aim, Basiri Man, and Kome for a very impressive 9th place finish. There are some more runs that are worth highlighting, even though, mathematically speaking, they weren't all that impressive. The man, the myth, the legend himself, Ron, has finally decided to regularly go to events again, having as many tournaments in the last three months as he had in the entire three years before that. 2. This was his first major event since May of 2022, and he earned himself a respectable 17th place. And while he only got a Gorioka win, he also only lost to Kome and Akola pushing Kome to a Game 5 in the process. One of the fastest rising stars, Neo, continues to impress. 
Although he narrowly missed top eight, losing to Karage and Yaura, which can partially be attributed to his heart disease, he still put up one hell of a run. Not only is this his best result at a major so far, he also beat some heavy hitters, namely T and Shiryuki on the way. While Shattuck has been considered the best solo Korin for a while, Neo has really been giving him a run for his money, and if he continues to get results like this, the title of best Korin in the world will seriously be up for contention. But, although Seibugeki happened this past weekend, it most likely wasn't the focus for most spectators, because Collision 2023, the super major and final summit qualifying event, just happened. So, stay tuned on this channel, maybe dropping a sub, wink wink, because whether Japanese or North American events are more to your liking, we'll keep you up to date with everything that goes down in the world of Smash. Thanks for watching! Of course, huge shoutouts to the people who made this video possible, Fortuna the scriptwriter, Chugabit the video's editor, and Devil May Cats for the SEO. Make sure to drop a like and a sub if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you next time.